for a half hour album review. And I'm sorry I didn't make it on Friday. I wasn't feeling well, so I needed to catch up on some rest. <laughs> anyway, um, this shirt, if you notice, I'm doing, yes, I'm doing a review of the very first album and the group uh, that started all the, that really put the funk in funk. <laughs> uh, well, you know what I'm trying to say. They, they really gave funk its name. And that is George Clinton and Parliament slash Funkadelic. I'm covering Funkadelic today, their very their first album, their debut album, which came out in January of 1970. And they have uh, quite a few, of course, they've built an empire. George Clinton really spearheaded an empire between the two bands. They were under the same, they had the same, uh, same style of music, only Parliament was a little bit different. I think they were more... Um, some of it, their, their songs are the ones that really made the uh, mainstream charts, like the uh, top 40. And Funkadelic didn't have any, but I like personally like Funkadelic better. They're a lot more uh, guitar oriented. And a lot of the songs on this album, particularly the first one, it's called Mommy, What's a Funkadelic? It reminds me in the beginning, it kind of reminds me of some of Jimi Hendrix's spoken word, like in that song, If, if Six Was Nine. That's what the beginning of this reminds me of, and it reminds me of something that Jimi Hendrix could have played, perhaps. And um, if you notice, I've had this t-shirt and I can't believe it still fits. I've had this since 2006 and it says Soul Funk. And now that I realize, I wonder if this was made, fashioned as uh, taken from a Betty Davis uh, picture, because that looks exactly like her. And of course I never knew, but I think whoever made this uh, was a D Betty Davis fan, and uh, this is when I never knew Betty Davis even existed. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into, um, there's the cover. Uh, the, uh, the jewel case is all cracked, so luckily, though, I can read a little bit from the uh, booklet. And actually, here's George Clinton here at the very far right before he donned his a beard, his that gray beard and those feathers he had, that's him right there. Just a typical, he was from, uh, I think he was born in Georgia or Mississippi, one of the down south. And yeah, everybody knows who George Clinton is. If you don't, if you mention the black dude with all the feathers, you'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, um, and he was even in a, I remember he was in a Burger King commercial in like 1989, 1990. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read some of the liner notes here. Sometimes I'm going to read liner notes in and out, like maybe in the beginning, a little bit of liner notes before reviewing the songs so I don't have to shout or um, because a lot of times I have to turn the music up because you can't really hear it from your end. So I have to turn it up way loud and then I end up shouting because it's loud on my end. But anyway, um, George Clinton says, man, I was in a place called Keep Running Mississippi. <laughs> and let's see, they started off as the Parliaments, and they had a song in 1967 called I Want to Testify. So they were more, I like the soul, kind of coming into funk, not quite. And um, I know Sly and the Family Stone, actually, I think we're really – Portia, well, really, actually, it was Sly and the Family Stone that really started the funk thing, but uh, Parliament Funkadelic, I think, was the one that really, really put it on the map. It was after the embryonic stage. It was already given birth, and from then on, it um, the infant grew and grew and grew, and it aged very well. <laughs> so... Um, the single Testify had propelled them to national fame and a need to tour. And uh, the Parliament stretched back to the 50s when George Clinton put together a vocal group based around the Plainfield, New Jersey barbershop. And a lot of the members of uh, that were future members of Funkadelic in Parliament were included. And um, they went on, of course, the uh, guitar player Eddie Hazel was one of the most underrated guitar players ever. And if you check out their song on their album, Maggot Brain, it's the title track. It's about 10 minutes long, like Funk it, What's a Funkadelic. Um, truly, truly amazing guitar. And let's see, there's also, um, they, they started, I think they started their recording in uh, early 69. And the album was released in 1970. 
and there was uh, I think one of the one of the hits, two of the two of the major songs on here that were um, that were in the top one uh, top one hundred were "I Bet You" and "I Got a Thang." So let me let's get into this here. If you will suck my soul, I will lick your funky, funky emotions. emotions. Chewing like he's chewing gum, like like I said, if six was nine, that's what it reminds me of. Acid funk. That's what it is. Ooh, be back. This reminds me of being in downtown Detroit. I think a lot of this is based in Detroit. Yeah, just Hendrix like in every way, shape, or form. Those beginning lyrics. And there's another there's another album by them that follows this format, but actually this album that we recorded, the second album that they had after this was done con completely all of it was done on LSD. And you can really tell from the title track. The name of the album was called Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. It is the beginning. The, the title track is Fly On, Jimmy. And yeah, it's um, you, that's definitely ex an experience. I just reordered the CD because the old one, it was getting old. And plus they had a little bit of bonus tracks. Like I said, some of the bonus tracks are, are hit or miss on any album. And this, these bonus tracks had the um, instrumental to one of their hits from the album called I Want to Know If It's Good For You. So this one's also 10 minutes long. Yes, Eddie Hazel was a guitarist and he died young. I can't remember. I think it was drug overdose. He was only 40. I think he was in his 40s. He was young. But anyway, here's the next one. It was their very first single from the album. It's called I Bet You. They have a lot of feedback in this album. It adds to that psychedelicness. Oh yeah, this was I think the very first funk album, the very first funk album. I mean Sly Stone, Sly and the Sam Family Stone were funk, but they were like a lot more, uh, you know, they're soul, they're soul here, but they're mostly hard hitting funk, blues funk, soul. But definitely Funkadelic, I think, were a lot more hard-hitting than Parliament was. And Funkadelic also has this album that I mentioned called Maggot Brain. <laughs> it's, they have, but actually, there was t-shirts that were sold that you can find on eBay. And it shows, if you check it out, it's a black background, and it's like dirt, and it's a woman with a fro pushing up out of the dirt and she's got her mouth in this huge grin. Yeah, it's pretty freaky. And um, like I said, this was the, check out Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow as well. That album was did totally on LSD. And you can tell from in the, um, the title track, you can just, you can just hear it. You don't even have to guess that it was. Here we go. Betcha never I like the music in this too near the end. We fast forward a little. Just very, very uh, stinging, hard hitting funk. 
And near the end is what I like when they fade and it's just never lose. And it's. If you notice me, I get into, you know, song lyrics, but if you notice, you know me. My thing with music is perfect is mostly the actual the instruments and the beat and the uh, melodies and um, just the basic sounds of it. I'm what it yeah I'm more right brained unfortunately but I'm working on the left brain. <laughs> anyway um there's a like just drenched in a lot of reverb and um, let's see what else. Um yeah it says of course Anything involving George Clinton was unlikely to be a completely stable situation and so approved. <laughs> Westbound released two singles pretty quickly after they signed the band. The first, Music From My Mother, described above, or whatever. M music From My Mother broke into the lower reaches of the R&B chart. And this one, I bet you, did even better. It reached 22 on the R&B charts and even rising to number 63 in the pop charts, which isn't too bad, really, considering. But um, Funkadelic had, I think their one, I think their only song that reached the top 40 was in 1978, and it was called One Nation Under a Groove. And at the same time, Parliament, re um, that same year, Parliament had a uh, hit song in... Uh, what was the name of it again? God, I can't think of it now. Flashlight, flashlight. And I remember that being played on the radio a lot. And at the end of that one, you hear them sing, Everybody's got a little light. Under the sun, under the sun. <laughs> now here is music from my mother. Bluesy. Blues funk at its finest. And one of the guys singing here sounds like he uh, definitely smoked before he put this, he recorded this song. The chorus reminds me, I think that band Rose Royce borrowed that riff, that chorus, and one of their songs called Do Your Dance. Where they go, whoa, ha, whoa, ha, hey. Rose Royce was a um, was a really great soul and funk group, funk disco soul group in the mid '70s. Of course, they came out. They did the soundtrack to Car Wash. That was their very first album, and that one I love. That I love. And their second album called In Full Bloom had that song "Do Your Dance" on it, and their chorus. I think they oh, got that chorus from this song. Time. Keep one in Mississippi. And I heard on my way back. This is a good song. You gotta hear this. I hope you can hear this. Yeah, that sounds a lot like Rose Royce in that introduction they do. So yes, this is definitely the album that started it all. And you got so good to me, man, that I stop running. My feet was tied and I'm <laughs> So I reached in my inside pocket and got my heart out to sit down my old feet up in your old train and get to skip myself a little bit of that old fucking thing. Yep. I love that. <laughs> Sly and the family, Sly Stone does that too. I think in one of his songs. I won't. Um, I won't say what the title is. It's very controversial, but he does that. <laughs> and the Pointer Sisters, and a lot of their early stuff. I love the early Pointer Sisters when they did the '40s thing. There was one song. There's a couple songs where they do that where. 
where they do uh, like uh, they 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 do the uh, improvise on instruments uh, by with their mouths. Okay, here's another one of their songs that hit the top 100. This is my fa favorite. This is mind blowing. It's called "I Got a Thing." You got a thing, everybody's got a thing. See, my musical tastes are very eclectic. And I'm always bringing stuff like this to the forefront to introduce people to new stuff that they've never heard of. One shot deals like, like the Dragons and Fuzzy Duck that I covered. The middle part of this song is what I really like. When they start really kicking into the music, you'll see. But let's see, the end result was that the album and its related 45s had virtually all these musicians contributing to the musical makeup. While such, while on several tracks, various Motown session players such as Bob Babbitt, Earl Van Dyke, Dennis Coffey who's a great guitarist too, Dennis Coffey, was on a lot of those um, uh, Temptations, I think, Temptations uh, guitarists, and Rare Earth guitarist Ray Monette joined in on the fun. So they were on this album as well. Okay, here we go. I love. See, this is a lot more rock oriented. Hope you can hear this. Truly amazing. Yeah, you can tell they're they're um they were influenced by Jimi Hendrix, who was still alive at the time. And you wonder what what would have been what it would have been like if Jimi came and played on a lot of their albums. You don't smoke what I smoke. You don't feel what I feel. You don't choke like I choke. So yeah, like I said, I love bands that nowadays those bands that I've always mentioned, which are monophonics and big, um, big boss man, they redo this type of music. And I just love it. There's also an R&B uh, soul artist that I saw on, uh, caught on YouTube. I think she's got a few CDs out. She's not well known, but she definitely has this, this video of her. She definitely has a 70s vibe. And she does this um, like kind of uh, Detroit sounding soul or like Washington DC, like that song, Billy Stewart, that song, I Do, I Do Love You, which is one of my favorites. It's truly a moving song. And along those lines, she just funk, and her name is Trish Toledo. You gotta check out a song and a video called The Only One. Trish Toledo is her name. And she's just, she's awesome. And I love her 70s. She's got that 70s vibe going. And she's in this nice Cadillac and uh, got her polyester bell-bottom outfit on. And and she's even got the 70s makeup, the blue. I used to wear that in the 80s, like in the early 80s. Let's see. The next song is Good Old Music. <laughs> There's also bonus tracks, one called Open Our Eyes. It's a piano, it's, it's a gospel, like a gospel a tune. And it was played backwards in that album that I mentioned. There's their second album called Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. The last song called Eulogy and Light, which is really spooky, you gotta hear that. It, it's a play on the Lord's Prayer. And they have that song playing in the background, uh, backwards and it adds to the uh, surrealness it really does next one we have two more songs left of the original album and then 
I'll play that um, Open Our Eyes. That's uh, closed with that, Open Our Eyes. And like I said, it's a gospel tune. Really nice. Really nice song, too. And let's see. Um, Funkadelic with president of Janus Records. And a man that's uh, this Armenian guy on the very right hand side. This is, I think, when they were just getting signed and they were just getting going with this album. And so, here, let's see if they have the uh, total. Oh, wait. Oh, no, they don't. They have this is the cover, if you can see. A free your mind, see free your mind, and in the back you see her, she's naked on the back, and it says, and your ass will follow. <laughs> so when you fold it out, it has the girl going like this. So, yeah, and that's the one where they recorded completely on LSD. Okay, next one is Qualifying Satisfy, but the last one, the one after this is what I like. It's it's kind of like, uh, reminds you of people all sitting together. That reminds me of Cream. The, the guitar, it reminds me of Cream. They might have liked Cream as well. But this la this next song reminds me of a bunch of them just sitting around, like like doing like kind of like what kids would do. There was this game on that show, Zoom, that I told you about that was in the, popular in the 70s on um, public television. It was called Story Concentration. Yeah, everyone hit like. There you go. <laughs> so you switch from your Lenovo to your phone so you can actually comment. Oh, nice. Okay, good. And anyway, the Zoom, they would play this game called Story Concentration. goes, and they start with like a, we went to the store and you know you have to you have to continue it and if you can't think of anything then you're out and you know and so on but that's what this reminds me of here it is beware behold i am funkadelic this sounds behold, like i am funkadelic how much longer do you want? I want to do my weights yeah i want to do get exercise too um in about um in about five minutes. I think I'll be on in uh, about five minutes. Unleash your funky mind. Play with your funky mind. Okay, let's let's go get into it. It's called What is Soul? What is Soul? I don't know. They say soul is a ham hock in your cornflakes. And so on and so forth. Unfortunately, I can't play the whole thing, but I can play parts of it. I think they were burning the joint when they did this song. Okay, hold on. Yeah, they were. I can hear the coughing. In your cornflakes. <laughs> what is so? I don't know. So. So is the ring around your bathtub. <laughs> the ring around your bathtub. I want to find one in particular that it says, that they say. Uh, is a joint rolling toilet paper. Yeah, a joint rolling toilet paper. <laughs> I love that. Okay, now the very last song I'm going to play is that um, gospel to open our eyes. This is it. This was played in the background, like I said. Reversed in that song called Eulogy and Light in that album, their second album. And once I get once I get the CD in, I'm gonna review that album as well. So yeah, so they do a lot of funk and George Clinton also did a um, couple of gospel sounding tunes. But this song is gospel sounding as it is. When you play it backwards, it sounds really, really, um, I won't say, it's not, not demonic, but very surreal, very, um, it scares you a little with the guitar and the way the uh, vocals come through. And like I said, it's a play on the Lord's Prayer. So anyway, 
Let's go back to let's go back to number three. I got a thing before I sign off. Oh no, that's not it. Number four. There. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now. I hope everybody enjoyed the very first funk album that put that really uh, defined was where the word funk came from. Was George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic and uh, here's George Clinton again before he donned the feathers. There he is. And I think he's still alive and kicking. So anyway, that is it for the half hour album review or the 25 minute album review. I will be back uh, tomorrow. I may have a special on Friday. I think I'm going to hold a special show. It's going to be more 70s, more, um, not 70s, Florida hot, not hot spots, but Florida um, attractions in the 70s and I'm probably gonna have that on Friday I'll do another album review uh, tomorrow at the same time 1 30 Eastern stand Eastern time and I will see you everybody have a wonderful Tuesday and we will see you all tomorrow bye bye